right? So here's a Yes, it's early. The keyboard yeah. hates me. Always use test at test.com so I never forget. Right, so here's a dynamic page. So this is doing everything, right? It's got the HTML and CSS, so it's the view. It also has, if we looked at the code, it also does the model part of connecting to the database and sending an SQL query to get data from a movies table. And then we've got the PHP script that does the controlling, that does all the logic part, right? So this one single PHP page right now, it's performing all three of these functions. We build one page to do it. When we build node applications or any application using the MVC pattern, we break out the presentation from the data operations from the logic. And those actually all go into separate files that are linked together. What would be some of the reasons or some of the benefits of using this kind of architecture as opposed to just creating a page that does all of it? Okay, yep, explain a bit more, absolutely. Why, how is this helpful if something breaks? Absolutely, it makes debugging easier, right? If we have a data error, well, we just go into the model file. We don't have to bother looking here or here. So that would be one benefit. What else would be a benefit of breaking this structure up into three separate files? What if we were working in a team environment? How does this structure help? Right. The front-end developer really just works on the views. They don't need to access the model files at all. Whoever's in charge, so we can divide the labor easily, and we're not working all on those sa the same files. Right? The front-end developer's working here, back-end developer's here, database person's working here. So that's useful. Anything else? Any other advantages you could see from this structure? What about reusability? How does this architecture help us in that respect? Serve up the same information on a different, uh, well, you can serve up different information on the same visual image. So. Okay, so let's say we have a public side and an admin side, right? Both of them need to be able to see orders. Well, if we build this where everything's jammed in all at once, we're going to repeat that code on two separate pages. <laughs> Right? If we have to change it, we're going to have to change it in two places. Here, if we have a model file that queries the database and gets a list of orders, well, if we change what that query looks like, it only lives here. And then any view that uses it is going to get that same update. Okay? It also makes testing easier because we can test these components in isolation. Or if we build something, let's say we build a component that we might want to use across multiple sites. Let's say we build a news, let's say we have newsletters. Well, if we build a model and controller for newsletters for one site, we put a view on it for that client, well, and suddenly if we want to reuse that code in another application, we can just import the model and the controller to a different application. All we need to do is put new views on it. We can reuse that code from one application to another. So it's not particular on any particular technology. It's really a pattern or a structure. So the way that this looks like when the end user requests a page, so the user sends a request by URL to the server. The controller tries to interpret that URL. And this is where that express framework comes in. We look at the URL and we decide what page to load. It's not automatic like it is just with static HTML files where the server just simply serves out the address of the page, the name of the page the user types in. We can actually do this ourselves. That's what I'm doing right here. If we have a get request in our root folder, we want to show the view called index. That's what this code in Node and Express means. So we have full control over what our URLs look like. 
easy to generate friendly URLs like this. So MVC request comes in, the controller decides what to do. Maybe we need data so it connects to the database, it goes through the model and might fetch some data. And then it comes back and determines what view are we going to load and it passes the data to the view. So the user at the end sees an HTML page with whatever dynamic content has come out of our database. And maybe we're using Angular for that, maybe we're not. So this is kind of where we're going. This is what our applications will look like. So here's one. Um, actually, if I open one, I could show you a, let me open a better one. Let me open one that has some data in it. So here's what the structure will actually look like. So this little application was just a simple create, read, update, and delete using a one table database where it was for creating and managing articles in a database. So we can see how this breaks down into model view and controller. We have a, a model folder and here's our article model that basically describes this is what an article looks like in our database. So we create a schema with three fields, a created and the data type, a title, and the content for an article. And then we just make this public. What's Mongoose? We'll talk about that later. It's just used for talk, it's used as an interface to talk to MongoDB. It's basically a library for connecting Node to a MongoDB database. So this tells our application, hey, this is what an article looks like. It does similar thing to what we used with ASP.NET when we used the entity framework, if you remember. We created those diagrams where we had model classes representing our tables. Then we had our views, so a view that showed all the articles might look like this. So we've got an HT, some HTML combined with some server-side variables. And then sitting in between, here was the root file. So on our home page, when the user went to the root folder, we were going to use our model to find all the articles. We were going to load our view called index, and we were going to pass in the results of our query. So this is broken up into three separate files. And then we have a dynamic web page that looks kind of similar to this one, really, but where we've broken these things out into separate files and separate pieces, rather than just jamming all the code in one place. So one of the nice things about learning to use the mean stack in this course, learning how MVC works, is all MVC, this pattern is the same no matter what the technology is. So once you understand MVC and you're out job hunting and you can put MVC on your resume as one of your, the technologies that you know, you can walk in and you can do MVC with anything. So long as you learn the language, you understand the architecture and the pattern. They're all going to be similar to what we do in here. So for example, when we did ASP.NET, we didn't use MVC with ASP.NET, but after this course, if you were to go back and try and learn it, there's some really good tutorials on Microsoft's site, it would be easy for you, because you already understand the .NET framework and C Sharp and how ASP.NET works, and when this class is done, you're going to be familiar and comfortable with the MVC pattern. So to go ahead and use that kind of technology will be easy for you, just putting together two things you already know. Um, okay, so that's most of what you need to know. I'm just going to see if I can show you a student project that was built last year. Yeah, here's one. So uh, this one of the things you're going to do in our Thursday class in Project Studio, you're actually going to build a real application. Now for that application, we'll talk more about it on Thursday, you can actually use any technology you want. I don't care. I'm not going to tell you you have to use this or you have to use that. So last year, 
uh, for Project Studio. The students did a project for the uh, School of Engineering. It was a research project in conjunction with the um, electric vehicle charging station outside of a building. They were building an application for so the users who use that are to be logging their use of the charging station. So some of the students used ASP.NET, some of them used PHP, and some of them actually decided, well, it was a good idea to practice what they were learning in this class, so they used the mean stack. So this is actually a kind of a mobile, designed as a mobile friendly app. So these guys used Node.js, they hosted it in the cloud on Heroku. So the college is actually using it. Um, oh boy, I can't remember if I saw So they built the full administrative panel. They've used Angular for these kind of message, this kind of messaging. So they used Angular for these sorts of things. So this is kind of, this was a good project. I mean, this was the one of all the ones that were used. Few of the students actually got paid when the class was over by the engineering department. They got a bursary to finish this and actually launch this. So this is kind of an example of what you can do and what I think you guys will be able to do with the mean stack by the time we're done. So that software is on the, the fuel thing? It's, it's, uh, it's not directly in there because the charging station comes with its own software, but what they ask is when people charge, that they basically register here, and what they put in there, once you've put in your license plate, when you come back, it recognizes you. You don't have to log in every time. You just put in your license plate, and it asks you, like, um, what, what's your current odometer reading? How long are you going to be at the college? And then when you leave, it's asking you to also check again. So they're trying to get a sense of who's using the charging station, how long are they here for, and how much of what percentage of their battery is getting charged while they're at the college. And then they're trying to use this data because um, PowerStream has basically put that in and given that to the college kind of as a, as a pilot project, as an experiment. And they're looking at where else they may want to put these charging stations in. So they're talking about putting them, should they put them like on the on routes, on the highways? Should they put them in shopping malls? Like not at Target? <laughs> so they're trying to, they're try, we're trying to gather some information about who's using the station and how it's being used so they can make intelligent decisions about whether, where to put them. You know, and are there enough of them, et cetera. So the students, these students, a couple of the groups used the mean stack to build out these applications. Okay. Um, so I think we've covered most things here. The other thing I'll just mention, so the benefits are, the benefits of using Node, one, it's super, so few people have mentioned, it's super fast. The code is asynchronous, so we can do multiple things at the same time. Um, it's also fast when we work with MongoDB because our data, basically our entire application is JavaScript, right? We can write client-side JavaScript, JavaScript on the server, and our data is in JavaScript format as well. So we can leverage our knowledge of JavaScript, and we don't have to kind of knit together all these different technologies. It's JavaScript through the whole stack. Um, it runs well in the cloud. We'll talk more about the cloud a bit later. Um, and it's platform independent. It will run on anything. And also, everything is free and open source, right? To download and install Node, a code editor, away you go. So there's no cost, there's no barrier to entry. Okay. Um, anybody have any questions about anything you saw on here? Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to show you, I'm just going to pause my recording. Now I realize in that little video we saw a bunch of code, you know, we haven't really looked at any node code, so some of that stuff didn't make sense. That's okay when he was doing HTTP and create server. We'll get into that. What I really wanted you to see was his example of how node allows us to write async. So asynchronous or non-blocking code, those mean the same thing. 
right? So the idea that our application can do something and at the same time can continue on and do other things while we wait for that first process to finish. So that's really where Node kind of shines and what it allows us to do that we really had no ability to do before on the web. You know, if we wanted to do some kind of process was going to take a while, we had to wait till that was done because uh, that process would block or would be synchronous. Okay, so that's really kind of the big benefit and why the main reason that Node is, or Node applications tend to run so fast. Okay. Any questions on anything you heard in the video? Okay, well, here's what I would like to do then. I think we'll take a pause here. When we come back, um, we'll try playing around. What I want to do is we'll maybe try and write a couple of simple node scripts that simulate the example he was talking about. We'll try one version of the code where it's blocking and we'll see the output and how long it takes and then we'll try to write the same code but we'll write it in asynchronous or non-blocking fashion and we can compare those results. So we'll write just a couple of files so make sure you have Node installed on your machine if you don't already. As I said it doesn't, you know, you probably install it in about a minute. <laughs> So install Node on your machine, we'll try that, and then um, we'll do a quick review, maybe have a quick look at GitHub and maybe do a sm small, simple lab with GitHub before we go for today. Okay, so we'll take a break here.